I'm sorry, mother, but I've reached my limit, Bradley said, his voice strained with frustration. Huh? What do you mean by limit? I asked, confused. I can no longer provide financial assistance to my unemployed brother-in-law, he replied. The person on the other end of the phone was my daughter's husband, Bradley. He spoke in an anxious tone, and his words were baffling. Unemployed? Financial assistance? What on earth was he talking about? My son, Dean, was definitely not unemployed. He worked diligently, earned his own income, and took care of me. There was no way he would be receiving any kind of financial assistance, especially not from his sister's husband. I needed to know what was going on, so I called my son. When I finally heard the truth from him, I couldn't believe it. My name is Caitlin, and I'm 55 years old. I live alone in an apartment, working part-time at a nearby supermarket. I have two children, my 31-year-old daughter, Faith, and my 29-year-old son, Dean. Neither of them lives with me. Faith got married five years ago and is currently living overseas because of her husband's job. As for Dean, he started a business with a friend four years ago and now runs the company as its president. I used to live here with my husband, but he passed away after a long illness. Since then, I've been living alone in this apartment, but the rent is high and my income wasn't enough to cover all the expenses. So how was I managing to live here? Thanks to my son, Dean. It was two years ago, shortly after my husband's death, that I was feeling lost. I had always been a full-time housewife, and suddenly, I was left to figure out how to live on my own. We had some savings, but a significant portion had been spent on medical bills. What little remained wasn't enough to sustain me for long. One evening, Dean came to me and said, Mom, you don't have to worry about anything. I'll take care of the rent for this place. I was shocked. What are you talking about, Dean? The rent for this apartment is far too expensive. I can't let you... He interrupted, his face calm and determined. This apartment is filled with memories of Dad and you, Mom. It's the place where Dad and I lived after Faith and I moved out. I want to keep it for both of us. Well, that may be true, but Dean, I can't ask this of you. It's too much, I tried to object. It's okay, Mom. My job is going well. Paying the rent here is no big deal. Let me take care of you, please, he replied. I couldn't hold back my emotions. Seeing him so grown up and responsible, I was overwhelmed. Thank you, Dean. I've been so worried about how I'd manage everything. From now on, I'll have to find ways to take care of myself, I said. You don't need to worry about that. I'm here for you, Mom, he reassured me. You've become so reliable. Thank you so much, I said, tears threatening to spill over. You've made me so proud. It's all good, really, Dean smiled. I'm just glad I can finally do something for you after everything you've done for me. At that moment, he handed me an envelope filled with money. This is for your living expenses. I tried to hand it back, insisting, No, Dean, I can't accept this. But he firmly refused. It's for you, Mom. Please. A few days later, Dean had my name removed from the lease and added his own. Thanks to him, I was able to stay in the apartment filled with memories of my husband. I was deeply moved by his generosity, and tears filled my eyes whenever I thought about his kindness. Later that week, I called Faith to share the news. Hello, Faith. Hi, Ma. I heard from Dean that you'll be able to stay in the apartment. That's great, she said, sounding happy for me. Yes, it's true. Dean is covering the rent now, I told her. That's wonderful, Ma. I'm really glad to hear it. I'm sorry, though. I'm just a housewife, so I can't help much, she lamented. Don't say that, Faith, I replied. It doesn't matter at all. Please focus on supporting Bradley. Faith's husband, Bradley, was a talented man, frequently entrusted with overseas assignments. Since their marriage, they'd been living abroad, and I hadn't seen them in years. Thanks to video calls, however, I could still see my daughter's face, which made the distance a little easier to bear. Don't worry about me. I'm proud of you and Dean. You're both doing so well, I reassured her. Of course, Ma. You know I always worry about you, but I'm so happy Dean is helping out. And Bradley has been concerned too. Actually, he suggested you come live with us. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Faith asked. Oh, really? I had no idea he was worried. I didn't mean to cause any trouble, I said, touched by the thought. Don't apologize, Ma, she said warmly. 
It's just that he cares about you, too. But if you and Dean have it sorted out, then that's great. When did my children become so independent? Not too long ago, they were so small. Now the roles have reversed, and I find myself relying on them. I felt a pang of helplessness as a parent. But more than that, I was filled with pride at their growth. Two years passed, and thanks to Dean, I continued living in the apartment. Faith would call occasionally, and I stayed busy with work, hoping to repay them one day. Then one evening, Dean visited and we had dinner together. As we ate, he suddenly asked, Mom, have you heard anything from Faith? I paused. Faith? No, nothing. Why? Did something happen? I became anxious. I'm not sure, he said, avoiding my gaze. But I've heard she might be having a tough time lately. My heart sank. A tough time? She hasn't mentioned anything to me. She said everything's fine. Maybe it is, Dean said, forcing a chuckle. I just heard she's dealing with some difficulties. Do you think I should do something? I asked, feeling the familiar surge of worry. No, no, it's okay. I'm keeping an eye on it. Just keep talking to her, Mom. I will, I said, still feeling uneasy. I decided to let the matter rest for the moment but I started asking Faith about her life more often during our calls. Every time she assured me, I'm fine, Mom. Her tone was always light and cheerful, so I let myself believe her. However, I hadn't realized the extent of the problems between my daughter and her husband. One day, after finishing my part-time job, I returned home to find seven missed calls from Bradley. My heart raced. Why would Bradley call me so many times? I muttered, full of worry. I quickly called him back. He answered immediately, his voice filled with desperation. Mother, please, enough already, he demanded. Bradley, what's going on? I asked, anxiety growing. I'm sorry, but I've reached my limit, he blurted out. Your limit? What do you mean? I asked, my voice trembling. I can't provide any more financial support to my unemployed brother-in-law, he continued. Unemployed? What are you talking about? Dean isn't unemployed, I said completely taken aback. Yes, he is. I've been sending him $1,000 every month for the past two years. Faith asked me to help, and I've been doing it, but I can't anymore, my son-in-law confessed. I was stunned. That's impossible. After all, he's the one covering my rent, I thought to myself, confused by what Bradley had just said. Listen, Bradley, I started, trying to keep my voice steady. I'm sorry but I don't think Dean is accepting any allowances from you. Bradley's voice tensed up. Caitlin, what are you talking about? I've been giving Faith $1,000 every month, and she's been passing it on to Dean. I blinked, surprised. But my son is a company president. Do you really think he'd ask you for such an allowance? I resented. Huh? Bradley confusion mirrored mine. Dean's the president? Not unemployed, he asked. Yes, he's been paying all the rent for my apartment. My voice wavered slightly. The rent? Bradley asked, clearly baffled. I thought it was covered by your late husband's inheritance, he added. No, I corrected him. Dean is still covering it even now. Did Faith tell you otherwise? I inquired. Bradley fell silent, clearly caught off guard. The realization slowly crept over both of us. Faith was lying. To confirm the truth, I quickly called Dean. Mother, it's been a while, Dean greeted me warmly over the phone. Without wasting time, I asked, Dean, are you in need of money? Huh? What's going on all of a sudden? Dean replied, clearly puzzled. If I were in need of money, there's no way I could even pay for your rent. Exactly, I sighed. So it seems that Faith, I wanted to continue. Wait, Dean interrupted. Did Faith tell you too, about wanting to borrow money? It hit me then. Faith had already asked Dean for money, too. The inconsistencies were glaring now. I shared what Bradley had said earlier. Could it be that Faith was borrowing money from Dean and Bradley? I called Dean again. Son, you need to know. Bradley told me he's been sending Faith money, but she's been telling me she's struggling. What's going on? Dean sighed. Mother, Faith told me that Bradley never gave her any allowances, so she couldn't help me. That's why I've been sending her money every month. My heart sank. So, Dean, you've been sending money to Faith? I caw concluded. Yeah, for about a year and a half now, Dean admitted. She asked me to help, 
so I've been sending her allowances. After finishing the conversation with my son, I started reflecting. A year and a half? Why would she lie like that? With each conversation, my distrust toward Faith grew. My anger simmered. What was that girl thinking, lying to both her brother and husband just to take their money? Determined to uncover the truth, I called Bradley again. Bradley, I began. I spoke to Dean. He's been sending Faith money too. There was a moment of silence before Bradley responded, I'll hire a private investigator, and then hung up the phone. Days passed, and Bradley informed me he was coming back home to discuss everything. He also asked me to contact Dean. The truth was finally starting to come to light. At the agreed time, the intercom buzzed, and my daughter Faith and Bradley arrived. Faith, whom I hadn't seen in years, smiled brightly, but Bradley's gaze was cold and distant. Dean showed up shortly after. Faith, cheerful in the reunion, was oblivious to the tension. It was Dean who broke the silence. Sis, don't you have something to say to us? He began. Something to say? Faith laughed, clearly unaware. What could it be? Like, we're getting along well? She asked. Dean's tone grew stern. It's not about that. Then what is it? She frowned. Seriously, what's with the weird atmosphere even though we've finally come home after so long? Sensing our uneasy atmosphere, Faith began to fiddle with her phone, visibly irritated. Bradley took it from her hand and confronted her, his voice cold. Cut it out already. You've been lying and deceiving us for so long. Faith looked confused. Wait a minute, Bradley. What's all this, suddenly? Don't play dumb, Bradley snapped. You pretended to be in financial trouble and made Dean send you money. You've been using all the money I entrusted to you, haven't you? What are you talking about? Faith's face began to pale. Then take a look at this. Bradley pulled out an envelope from his bag and spread out photos on the table. The moment Faith saw them, her face drained completely. The photos showed her holding hands and kissing a young man. Faith let out a small scream, horrified. Bradley, ignoring her, spoke to both me and Dean. As you can see, Faith's been cheating on me with a young man while I was working. The guy is still a student with no income. Faith was supporting him entirely, he explained. I sat there, stunned by the revelation. The reality was worse than I imagined. My heart was heavy and I could barely speak. I instinctively lowered my head. Bradley, I'm truly sorry for my daughter's actions. No, it's not your fault, mother, Bradley said, his tone softened but resolute. However, given the circumstances, I'm proceeding with divorcing your daughter. Yes, I understand, I nodded my voice barely above a whisper. That's fine. Faith widened her eyes in shock. Wait, Mom, what are you saying? Help me, please. If things continue like this, I'll really get divorced, she stated. Help you? I repeated incredulously. What are you talking about? After deceiving your husband and your brother, extorting money from them, and engaging in infidelity. How audacious of you. I was devastated. Mom, why? Faith pleaded. Aren't you supposed to be on my side? I stared her down, refusing to meet her hand as she reached out. Cut it out. I believed in you all this time. I thought you had grown into a fine person and it made me happy. Even though we were far apart, I cherished our video calls. But you betrayed all of that. I continued with indignation. Mom, Faith cried, tears streaming down her face. Don't call me mom. You've trampled on Dean's and Bradley feelings and you exploited your own family. I'm disappointed in you. Wait, Mom, please, she begged, her voice desperate. Is that something that can be excused as a momentary lapse? I replied coldly. You are no longer my daughter. Do whatever you want, but don't ever claim to be part of this family again. From now on, work diligently and repay every cent you took from Dean and Bradley, I demanded. Faith turned to Dean seeking some kind of salvation. Dean, help me, please. It's impossible, sis, Dean said firmly. You extorted money for your affair. I can't defend that. Bradley stepped in as well. Enough, Faith. No matter how much you cling to others, no one is on your side anymore, he added. How unfair, Faith muttered bitterly. Hiring a private investigator. Bradley cut her off, his voice rising in anger. Who drove me to do that? How can you bring up something like that while ignoring your own actions? 
I can no longer see you as my wife. We are getting a divorce. With that, Faith collapsed, sobbing uncontrollably. No one approached her. The decision was final. As Bradley had promised, the divorce proceeded swiftly. The evidence from the private investigator sealed the deal. Faith was ordered to repay approximately $25,000 to Bradley and $20,000 to Dean, a total of $45,000. Her once elegant life as a housewife was over, replaced by a difficult existence as she struggled to repay her debts. Still, in my heart, I believe that one day, Faith will reflect on her actions, repay her debts, and we might someday live together as a family again.